Muslim. I am a Muslim. Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It's the month in which Muslims fast and it's one of the five pillars of Islam. The five pillars are the Shahada, which is the declaration that there's one God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. The second pillar of Islam is the giving of zakah or charity. Every, every Muslim is obligated to give at least 2.5% every year of their income to um, the needy, charitable causes, etc. The third pillar of Islam is um, the five daily prayers. We have to pray to God five times a day. The fourth pillar of Islam is the um, pilgrimage to Mecca. Once in a lifetime, if a Muslim is able to financially and they have the health to do so, they must go to perform pilgrimage at Mecca. The fifth pillar of Islam is the fasting in the month of Ramadan. And we do it because a, um, God commanded us to do it as the believers. And it's um, also because the prophets before us did it. It says in the Quran that Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, was instructed to do it. So was Jesus, peace be upon him, and the other prophets, etc. Second reason why we do it is because it's, it's a wisdom in which we're used to every single day of the year taking for granted the food we eat, the water we drink, and we're blessed, especially in the West, to eat and drink as much as we like without really thinking about it. It's a means to an end, really. In some parts of the world, many people tend to forget that probably the most people in the world don't have access to water regularly. And fasting, from, which means completely abstaining from water, and food from dawn to sunset, um, it reminds you of how difficult it is to get through the day without water or food and it kind of gives you a it makes you more sensitive and aware of what other people in the world are going through so it's a means of bringing humanity together or utilitarianism if you like in other words before um, sunrise muslims are required to do what's known as um, suhoor which means um, the fa the last meal you can have before your fasting commences on the day so typically you'd wake up around before Fajr time, which is the morning prayer, which is typically before 3 or 4 a.m. And Muslims would have their um, drink and food before it begins to make the day easier for them. Um, this blessing's in that because that's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to do and he encouraged us to do the same. When you break your fast, it's known as iftar, so the breaking of the fast. After the fasting comes to an end, Muslims can actually do iftar in the mosque. Most mosques provide um, food for Muslims and and drink to break the fast on but it's not obligatory so muslims can break the fast at home with their family eid literally means festival in arabic muslims only have two celebrations every year the two eids the first one is called eid al-fitr which essentially means um, the festival of the fast breaking and we celebrate that eid um, to commemorate the end of ramadan so at the end of ramadan when muslims have finished their fasting and it's come to an end, we celebrate that with Eid al-Fitr. The second Eid in the year is known as Eid al-Adha, which means the festival of the sacrifice. And that's to commemorate um, Prophet Abraham when, he was te when God was testing his devotion to God. Um, God told him to sacrifice his son. Obviously, God was never going to let him sacrifice his son. It was just a test to see if Abraham was very religious and believed in God. And Abraham did so. And when he was about to sacrifice his son, um, God said that you've passed the test and in his place, we will sacrifice an animal instead. And to celebrate Abraham's devotion to God, um, Muslims are required every year in Eid al-Adha to sacrifice an animal to feed the poor and needy. The Islamic calendar is based on the lunar calendar typically in the West, it's based on the solar calendar. So as a result of being um, based on the lunar calendar, Eid actually it moves backwards or forwards 10 days every year. Eid al-Adha takes place at the end of um, the pilgrimage at Hajj. It typically takes place 70 days after Eid al-Fitr. This year, my family got together and we went to a nice restaurant. In Kirklees, there are many halal restaurants and Muslims, as long, if it's a vegetarian, you, it doesn't really matter where you go. But if you eat meat, uh, Muslims are required to, um, it's similar to Jews in the sense that they can only eat kosher. Uh, Muslims can only eat the equivalent of kosher, which is halal. 
So the only difference is the animal, um, all the blood is drained from the animal when it's killed, and um, God's name is mentioned before the animal's killed. So that's those are the re main requirements for halal slaughter. The mosque for a Muslim is the house of worship, so it's equivalent to um, a synagogue for a Jew or the church for a Christian. Muslims are required to pray five times a day to God. However, once a week, Muslims are required to do congregation prayer on a Friday. Congregation prayer involves all Muslim men going to a mosque, praying shoulder to shoulder, regardless of wealth, class, skin colour, in unity, because all are equal in front of God. So Islam doesn't just promote equality and brotherhood, it also puts it into practice through the weekly congregation prayer and through the annual pilgrimage to Mecca. As Malcolm X said, I remember one night with the sky overhead, I lay awake amid sleeping Muslim brothers and I learned that pilgrims from every land, every colour and class and rank, high officials and the beggars alike, all snored in the same language. Kirklees is multicultural and because of that, being able to practice my religion and for a sister to practice her religion as well, it's a lot easier than in other parts of England. Um, because on a daily basis, the Muslim religion is um, stigmatised and attacked by the media due to misunderstanding and misrepresentation of Islam by bad Muslims. You know, every community has bad apples. But the problem is, when, a, when there's a bad Muslim or bad apple, the media kind of holds that Muslim on a pedestal and represents them as some kind of exemplary Muslim, which is not the case at all. More, the majority of Muslims in the world are talking a community of over 1.4 billion people and growing fast, it's the fastest growing religion. Uh, completely peace-loving people that don't believe in terrorism, give charity, love thy neighbour, etc. And unfortunately, these Muslims are not highlighted as exemplary Muslims in the media. And because of that, this brings trials and tribulations to Muslims, particularly women that want to wear, for example, the hijab or niqab. And thankfully, in a community where it's multicultural, um, people that are not Muslim, they're, they're already used to that kind of culture, so they accept it. We live together as equals, in peace. But unfortunately, in other parts of the UK, it's not like that. They're, they're more discriminated against, etc. Kirkley's Local TV, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And I'd just like to say to all the viewers, um, Assalamu Alaikum, which means in Islam, um, peace be upon you.